Hey guys, welcome to rugby, rough, raw, and extremely real. Now, let me give you guys fair warning up front. Um, if you are, uh, let's call it a, you know, a dog, dipshit, or otherwise, uh, you know, mentally disturbed, you shouldn't be watching this because here we don't pull the punches. We tell the truth as it is meant to, uh, that it was meant to be told straight down the line and man to man so if you if that's not your thing you're not gonna feel very welcome here so I will give you a fair warning and tell you to psh, make like a tree and leave uh, otherwise the rest of you are all welcome to stay of course um, and enjoy my very uh, I think uh, very eye-opening show opening huh look at my eyes okay cool now first and foremost let me inform you people that um, I was born in the orange free state the orange free state which was a very independent uh, republic around about a hundred plus years ago my greatest wish in the world would be that the orange free state would have their own team once more to take on the rest of the world because I am sure the orange free state team the full team would probably be able to play and beat South Africa and New Zealand on, on the same day. We are that good. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I will make a follow-up program to show you guys how awesome is the Free State team if we can assemble it from around the world. It's a totally amazing team. So that is my greatest dream. It would be to have the Orange Free State take on the likes of New Zealand, South Africa, England, all these uh, wannabes okay because we are the true champions the true champions so keep that in mind but seeing that the free state unfortunately and very sadly we do not have a team currently uh, to compete in the World Cup so guess what my next uh, team I support would be yep you guess correctly so that is the next team that I'm supporting for the moment anyway I hope they can get their house in order. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just. I have this my my new camera, by the way, on a tripod. So I'm trying to figure it all out. So let's start with the rugby, the World Cup, Japan, nine, the 2019. Uh, first, let me just say something very quickly about the opening ceremony. This is the the first round is over now, guys. So I mean, this is basically a broad, uh, pre, uh, uh, not a preview, a post view in the retrospect, post view in retrospect. So I like that. So keep that in mind. So the opening ceremony was okay, but hey, where were the ninjas? Where were the you know the ninjas, guys? There was not. I didn't see a ninja. Did you guys see one? Oh yeah, but you know, we're not supposed to be seen. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Okay, cool. So let's move on to the first game straight away. We had Japan up against Russia, and let me say straight off, uh, Russia was flipping. They am. Um, they really surprised me, guys. I mean, they, they look like this African team in disguise, you know what I mean? Uh, and they play, they try to play like them as well. They just, they just lacking a little bit of finesse, which comes from practice. So, as we all know by now, all these so-called smaller teams like the South Sea Islands, um, Russia, Georgia, they just don't get enough chance to play. It's all, a real, they are second class citizens. It's the it's rugby apartheid going on. Rugby apartheid. There are two. Let's face it. There are two classes of rugby citizens in the world: the rich and the poor. Like it's always been. If you don't have the money, you can't buy your way into the club. So it's really, really sad and really, really unfair. And that includes the Russians. And they played really well against Japan. Now for Japan, I think they did reasonably, reasonably well. Although they're coached by, New Z by, by Kiwis. I've got personally nothing against people from New Zealand. I've got a lot of friends from New Zealand and uh, I'm, not v I'm not a great fan of their rugby, honestly. So hold it against me if you want. I would just say if you don't like the message, don't shoot the messenger. But, uh, you know, Japan is coached by, by Kiwis. And uh, although, who scored the tries? Who scored the tries for Japan? Guess what? South Africans, yes. Uh, Machushita Ken, Ken, Kentaro Machushita, born in Pretoria. Pretoria is in the northern Transvaal. I'm from the Orange Free State, the northern Transvaal, Pretoria, one of the capitals of South Africa. There are three capitals, by the way. So, um, 
from uh, I think his father was from Zimbabwe the mother uh, is a Japanese so yeah so he was born in South Africa is he a South African in my book he is a fucking South African clearly is he a Zimbabwean? He could be. He could well be a Zimbabwean. Is he a Japanese? He could well be a Japanese. So he's play. He's playing for Japan, but he grew up in South Africa. He played. He's all his rugby in South Africa. He learned rugby in South Africa. By all intents and purposes, he is a South African. The the Japanese winger who scored three tries. Three tries, by the way. Now he was made man of the match. M O M. In my book, however, the real man of the match. Oh, by the way, before we move on, before we move to the real, who was the real man of the match in that game? People are saying so South Africans are xenophobic. You know, xenophobic South Africans. But look at this case: a Zimbabwean daddy meeting a Japanese woman, having a baby in Pretoria, South Africa. Where is the xenophobia here, guys? Are we, you know? Okay, but anyway, the real man of the match definitely, surely, and utterly was Lapis Labuskakhni. This guy played an amazing game. I mean, he was all over the park, all over the Russians. I mean, he, I saw him ripping off balls. I saw him, saw him made huge tackles, man. He, he tackled those big Russian boys that they fucking still hurting, I'm sure. That's why they lost to Samoa just last night, I'm sure. Um, they still felt... They're still suffering from the after effects of Lapis Lavaskachny. He scored a gr brilliant try, absolutely brilliant. It's going to be one of the tries of the tournament. And he is from the Orange Free State. The Orange Free State. There are no oranges, nothing is free, everything is in the hell of a state, but the best rugby team in the world, Lapis Lavaskachny. Okay? So that's my little take on, um, on Russia, Japan. Okay, now let's move on quickly to. Uh, sorry guys, I had to make notes. There were a lot of games, so excuse me if I glance to the left. To the left would be, is it your right or vice versa, okay? So anyway, let's go on to... Um, I want to talk... Uh, it's not going to be in perfect order, so the way it happened, guys, so you take your pick. I want to talk about Australia, Fiji, next. First question I have is, why do referees always, always, always favor the weaker team the weaker team by implication meaning the poorer team poorer in money financial resources is it's just weird you guys think about it you know I've been saying this for 20 years there should be a little bit investigation going on I'm not saying uh, all referees are corrupt I, I'm just saying they're probably possibly psychologically uh, weak simple-minded, uh, blind in one eye, blind in one, uh, not using the other half of the brains, or however you want to, you know, psychologically describe that. But I'm going to ask this question again and again and again. Why do referees always favor the poor, uh, the, not the, the fucking rich teams, okay, against the poor teams? Why? And that's not only in rugby, that's in every sport. Okay, um... Uh, let's see you know and the other the second question i have and i'm going to probably repeat this question over and over again is poor fiji the fijians must have fucking looked in the mirror after the game and think jesus i've been playing against myself the whole game you know i mean wherever you looked in the australian team australian team I'm, i put that in uh, little brackets the australian team was just how many how many australians were in the australian team guys can anybody try and tell me that? Because wherever you looked on the field, the Fijians were playing themselves. Which brings me back to the question about rich and poor. Is that fair? Is that fair? And in the end, so who won? The Fijians were beating themselves. F Fiji won, okay? Although they may have been camouflaged in a, in a different jersey from their Fijian jersey, they still fucking won this game, okay? That's my comment on um, um, Australia, Fiji, guys. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Give me your best feedback. But that is, I told you, this is rough, ready, and fucking raw, straight up. And I give it straight up. Take it or leave it. And if you can't stand the heat, you know, you got to leave the kitchen, right? Uh, so, you know, that will bring me to the next game, which is... Uh, France, Argentina. France, Argentina. Don't cry for me. I would fucking cry if I was Argentinian, man. Missed the final penalty at the death. 
could have won in the game, should have won the game, could and should and would have won the game, if, if, if. But again, the Argentinians must have thought, fuck, did we get lost on the way to Japan? Did we end up in somewhere in the, in the Pacific Islands? The French team was just, just full of them. I mean, what's going on? What the fuck is going on? It should be, and should we call this the, is this, is this really the World Cup? Or is this the Pacific Cup, the Pacific African Cup? That at, at, at the very least, no matter what you can say about South Africa or Namibia, we don't fucking import dozens and dozens and dozens of Fiji, uh, Fijians, Samoans, Tongans, and, and what else to play for us. So this is not, in my opinion so far, it's not the World Cup. It's the, it's the Pacific Island World Cup versus Africa. That's what it is. And possibly Argentina. I didn't notice any in the Argentinian side, so correct me if I'm wrong. Argentina played really well. If it wasn't for all those mercenaries in the French team, Argentina would have wiped the floor. I know my French friends won't like this, but it's a fact, guys. It's a fact. Um, there were a couple of good French players, French players in the French team. Um, but no, look good. And I'm not going to go down the, down that slippery slope now. And, 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 and but generally, it was the Pacific Islanders again and again and again, which is going to bring me. Um, so, what did I think of the game? Merde, merde. I mean, it's if you're French, you should play for France, okay? Not vice versa, okay? So, uh, all hail to Argentina. I hope you, get, Argentina. Please beat England, please. I beg you, I beg you. Even if it's just for, because against England, but I think the second time they're up against the Fiji, uh, the Pacific Islanders, which is going to be England, they're going to know what to do and how to play. You guys are not going to be falling behind 20, 20 points to three at half time and then hauling and clawing your way back in. Fucking destroy them right from the start. Teach them a lesson. Send them back to their own islands. Let English, let England pick English players, please. Please, please, do me a favor, do me a favor, okay? Which brings us to Namibia and Italy, Namibia and Italy. Okay, Italy, Italy had a few South Africans, guys. And to be honest, my Orange Free State team, the Free State Cheetahs coach, Franco Schmidt. By the way, guys, my name, you can call me Franco if you want. Franco is heading over to Italy to be, the, to be their head coach, starting after the World Cup. So they are still stealing South Africans and Cheetah players all over and now our coaches they so you know <clears throat> Namibia played well way man way I would say Namibia is a beautiful country gorgeous the last time I was there was in 19 end of my army service on the Angolan border we had the war going on I hitchhiked all the way from the Angola border uh, in uh, near the Caprivi strip sector 20 Rundu I hitchhiked all the way down to South Africa. It took me three days on a broken leg. And uh, I, I, I end up in one spot. I don't know how the hell I got there. And it said there, here, troop so-and-so stood for six days hitchhiking. And I was like, shit, I got to get out of this place. And that gives you an indication of the tiny, tiny population of Namibia. And for them to put up, to score three beautiful, great tries, guys, against Italy, all the might of Italy, Italy it's not a joke. Italy is, I mean, the budget of one, one Italian player is probably the budget of the whole Namibian team. So, you know, that gives you an indication. So for, for Namibia to play that well as they did, scored three wonderful tries, wonderful tries, guys. Go and watch it. Kudos. Um, Italians recruiting South Africans. Okay, at least it's not Pacific Islanders, guys. So, fortissimo, fortissimo. Which brings us, of course, to England Tonga. The poor Tongas must have been confused as hell. They must have thought, Jesus, did we get on the plane to Japan or were we still at home when they played against England? Because every other player in the England team looked like a Tongan. What's going on? I mean, guys, what is going on? Can somebody just explain that to me? I mean, is there any justice anymore in in this world? Somebody somebody shows up in England and he fucking what does he do? I don't know what you have to do to get an England team, but it seems to be 
It's like it's like falling out of a tree. You only have to let go, right? It's ridiculous, guys. It's ridiculous. So did England deserve to win this one? They won it. I don't even remember the score. I don't want to really know the score. Tonga played well. They fucking hit those guys hard. Um, but again, there is no justice. Okay. England seems to have shifted. Look what happened to the cricket. The cricket. They just got hammered by Australia. They, uh, Australia is now bringing in South Africans, and it, it showed. It showed in their uh, in their performance against England in the, and in the Ashes. England is is shedding their South Africans, even in rugby, and they are going to pay the price for that. Pay the price, okay? So that's my. And they're not going to win the World Cup, but I will. I will say. I will talk about the winners and losers later, okay? So let me move on to the to probably the the game that made me really what made me the most furious of all of these games. Most of them made me furious, right? Because they were unfair contests. But the South Africa New Zealand game made me fucking, you know, want to spit blood. Spit blood. Because has anything ever changed in rugby? The same old fucking scenario over and over and over again. Repeated uh, vomitously and just ad nauseum. Ad nauseum is French referees for some, uh, do they have a hard on for, for blacks, all blacks, the team of New Zealand? Uh, I mean, do the f I had a French girlfriend, guys, don't get me wrong, she was stunning. But I'm telling you, the French referees do not turn me on in any way. The opposite of that, they are bastards, dude. This game was given on a silver platter. South Africa controlled this game for 75 minutes. In five minutes, South Africa lost it. Threw it away, chucked it in the water, fucking, I don't know what they did. They took too, too long a walk on a short pier, in my opinion. And South Africa did not even play well. They did not even play well, and they should have beaten this all-black team at the, you know, just trotting along, just trotting along like a horse. There was no need to fucking put the, put the bullet down, you know, and, and go for the line. They were all over this all-black team, totally overrated. Um... Couple of mistakes here, couple of mistakes there. A lot of penalties from, you know, freebies from the referee. Um, like I said about referees already before, is there when? When is there going to be an investigation into refereeing in rugby? This was a shameless example, guys. Um, what can I add to that? Let me see if I had any notes about it. Um, well, South Africa played poorly. There's no, there's no other way to to put it. Um, the all the, all our marquee players were off off the pace. I mean, they were all over the place and off the pace, all over the fucking place. It wasn't fun to watch. Uh, Faf didn't have a good game. Uh, Andre Pollard missed a fucking kick. Like even I can do it with my with my broken left foot. Okay, any time of the day or night, um, even at midnight. With no lights on, I would be able to do it. Um, um, our front row, not bad. Actually, we're dominating. So wh uh, where does look? They got to cancel. They got to stop doling out penalties at scrums because it's all guesswork. It's all flip of a coin. The, the referees are guessing, and if they have a favorite like this French dude had had in, in New Zealand, it inevitably goes that way. So it's totally and utterly unfair. Totally and utterly unfair. Um, for me, the biggest disappointment in our team, I would say, was... Yeah, like I, I mentioned Pollard, man. That kick that he missed, that swung the whole game. And Faf de Klerk wasn't at his best. Loose passes. Overdone, overdone the fucking kicking. Willie LaRue wasn't that good. Um, no real oomph from him. Sia Kulisi. I'm going to make a program, should he actually have been the first black captain of South Africa? Should he truly have been the first black captain? That's my, I'm going to make it right now after this. And I'll put it, post it separately, guys, and I will tell you my reasons there and then. Now, he's clearly not match fit. Clearly. Uh, the others were not bad. I mean, the, the center pairing has never, ever got going. And they never will. That's the sad part. Uh, and we need Nkosi on the wing. I don't know why he was not playing, guys. That's a serious mistake. Rassi Rasmus is selling out. He's a fucking free stater. He's selling 
us out to the Western Province Rugby Union. I don't know what's going on there, but he is just packing this team with Western Prov Province quotas. Just previously, like uh, the previous coach did, Northern Transvaal quotas. A second tier of quotas. And now, the, uh, and now we have an injury to Nyakane. Who did they bring in? Thomas? Thomas? Why? What is wrong with Oxen Chair? And why was Dweba not there originally? This Mumba Nambi clown from the Western Province? He's got no oomph, no get up and go in him, man. I don't know. I, I, I'm suddenly very doubtful that we can even win this World Cup, you know. Um, so then I want to quickly just make a mention of uh, Scotland. Scotland was poor. They had a few South Africans there. Not enough, obviously. I think they lost one or two South Africans before the game. They had injuries. Ireland actually did well. With their South Africans, Stander played really well. Kreis, did he play? Kreis or Klein? Kreis, no, Kreis played for England, I think. Klein for Ireland or vice versa. Please correct me. I saw them a couple of times pop up. Um, then Wales looked okay, but you know what? I was really impressed by Georgia. This is another team that is sup sipping from the back's uh, teats, like we say in Africa, when the calf is drinking from the, you know, not the front, the back, where there's not enough milk. And there's another one that gets crucified, like like all these, like Russia and all, and, and all the Pacific Islands. And that's why they can't keep their players, guys. Can't keep the players. Uh, w w let me think of any other games now and what I saw. Oh, uh, yeah, so... Okay. Uh, maybe I probably missed a few games here and there, maybe not. But those were my main impressions, guys. Let me know, please, what you think about my impressions. I'm gonna uh, make another few videos very shortly. I remember what... First and foremost, why New Zealand will not win this World Cup or maybe will never ever win another World Cup, okay? And then secondly, should Sia Colisi have been the captain, first black captain of South Africa? And then I will, gonna, I, will, I will make my own predictions how this tournament will unfold. Okay, guys. This is rugby, rough, ready and real and raw. Subscribe, like, love, do whatever you want, okay? I don't care. But peace out. Bye-bye.